All right, so I'm going to be doing something a little different today than what we usually do on this channel. So even at 150,000 new subscribers, I've been trying to read through all your comments. And what I noticed is that a lot of you are not here for what's in the motherboard repair and the soldering playlist. You're not here to figure out how RTC circuits work. You're here for what's in the core philosophies and business talk playlist. And a lot of what's in those playlists are just ideas that I've come up with from just trying to start a business from nothing when I was 20 and didn't have a lot of money and learning as I went. But there's also a lot in that playlist. Uh, there was a lot that I learned and was influenced from by other people like Michael, who was uh, kind enough to join me here for the interview today. Anything from earning authority in a natural manner versus just demanding it because it says your name tag says you're the manager, solutions-based billing, how to deal with clients when they act rowdy, uh, dealing with depression, all of those things. And when you hear it from me, you're hearing it through the bias of my personal experience, through my filter. And what I was hoping to do today is start introducing you to the people who had uh, helped influence this mindset in me. Uh, because I didn't come up with a lot of this. A lot of this was just from people who were far more successful and far more experienced than me. So this is Michael Carvin. He is an uh, experienced uh, drummer, producer, educator, uh, Vietnam War veteran. I'm sure I'm missing a lot. Would you just be able to <laughs> introduce yourself and just tell us what you've accomplished so far and what you're working on right now? Uh, my name is Michael Carvin, and we just finished uh, the latest CD, Flash Forward. That's on Motima Records. And in January, uh, maybe January the 15th, the, uh, the Michael Carvin No Excuses documentary is coming out. And uh, uh, that's something that I've, I've always said over the years, well, decades, really. No excuses. I do not believe in excuses. I remember that. Why, Lewis? Why? Because excuses breed failures. Because you will never hear a successful person say something like this. Oh, I would like to apologize for having uh, my refrigerator full of food. You will never hear a successful person say, oh, I'm so sorry that I have enough money to buy braces for my children's teeth. So as an educator, Lewis, as a drum teacher, uh, when, a, uh, when a new student come to me, and they use the language hard and can't, then I'll say to them, well, if you believe it's hard, then why won't you leave? Because I'm not going to let you waste my time. And if they say they can't, then I'll say, well, why did you bother to even get up today? Because if, if, if you can't do something, then don't be wasting the world time. And it's one thing with the new students and it always happened and that's just uh, the way it is because of the language that they pick up from other people and there's nothing wrong with it in television and uh, the media is sorry today you can be walking down the street and somebody will bump into you and they just say sorry they don't even look at you they don't even they, they, they don't say i'm sorry they just bump sorry bump sorry so <laughs> I was telling a student of mine once, I say, he was saying, oh, man, I'm really sorry. Oh, Michael, I'm sorry. And finally, I said, man, let me tell you what sorry means to me. When a person tell me that they are sorry, this is what they're telling me. Carvin, shut up and don't ask me anything about why I'm not here on time like I'm supposed to be. Sorry mean, okay. Be quiet. Don't uh, don't say nothing to me. You know, and uh, I mean, really, what does it mean? I'm sorry. Why are you sorry? Well, what are you sorry for? What happened? What happened? Would you kill somebody? What, what, what are you sorry for? Well, I'm late. You aren't sorry because you are late. Or you would have been on time. I mean, how can you admit that you are something, but you won't, won't correct it? If you are on time, there's no sense to say, oh, man, uh, you, you know, I'm really sorry. I'm late. No, you're not. No, you're not. If you were, you would have done it right the first time. Exactly. And so when, when they say, I'm sorry, they are saying to me, don't ask me anything. I'm absolved. Yeah, 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 you know. <laughs> I remember you used, you told me that story a long uh, a while ago that somebody had bumped into you in the street and yeah. they had said sorry but they didn't say you you like who's sorry 
Are you yeah. sorry? Am I sorry? Is that person sorry? Yeah. That was that was that was a good one. Yeah, it's it's, it's just amazing, man. You know, language, Lewis. We have to be careful with language. You know, language is very important, man. We, it, it, you know, like. I will not let any words cross my lips if they don't serve me. So do you feel that sorry is a way of getting out of personal responsibility? Of course it is. Because, look, look, it's, it's the person born with a sorry fiber in their body? I don't think so. Well, then what does it mean then? Stop asking me why I did something Exactly, wrong. isn't it, man? It's like, hey, Carvin, I'm sorry, but, you know, well, shut up. I just, you know, I mean, that's... Stop being rude and yeah. looking at me for doing something wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if, if, if we are sorry in the sense of our physical makeup, then we should go to a doctor and correct that. But I don't think that any child is born sorry. I agree with that. You know, I mean, so, so as, as we grow up, the language, we pick up the language. And uh, everybody do it. I mean, it, you're not a bad guy or a good guy. If, 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 if one of your new clients should come to you tomorrow and say, oh, Lewis, I'm really sorry. That that uh, ladies and gentlemen, that doesn't make you a good guy, good guy, a bad guy. What we are discussing at this point is just that if we would stop using that language, then we will find that we could be more successful. See, I tell my students constantly, guys or ladies and gentlemen, look, you have to be out of your mind. A person has to be out of their mind, Lewis, if they want to be successful. Why? Why? Because it requires too much discipline. When? All the time. All the time. From the moment you get up until the moment you go to bed, it requires discipline. And, and, and that's not a gimme. And this is something that... Um, have taken me years to, uh, to develop. I'm never late for anything. Why should I be when I know that, hey, I made this appointment. We made this appointment today, Lois, where you and I would meet today at 4 p.m. You walked in with your crew. I'm here. We doing it. The only thing we said to each other, hey, man, it's great to see you because I haven't seen you in years. You, you, you know, it's nothing to be uh, sorry about. You came here to do your show. You in invited me and thank you, by the way, Lewis. So it's business, ladies and gentlemen. It's business. And business is not personal. Business is business. So in business, there's nothing to be sorry about. Just like a, a guy came to me late once. He said, oh, Mr. Carvin, I'm sorry I'm late. I said, how long have you been in New York? He said, well, I was born and raised here. I say, okay. I said, I was born and raised in Houston, Texas. Why is it that I can be on time in an area that I wasn't born and raised in, and you were born and raised in this area, and you are late? Well, you know, the subway was this or that. I'd say, but was that the first time that that had ever happened in the history of, of the subway? I hear that all the time. The subway was late. There's traffic. And one of the things that I used to tell people that no longer work for me is, you know, when has the subway worked in New York City? Period. But the guy filming is looking at why. Yeah. When has the subway actually worked in New yeah. York City? When yeah. is there no traffic? Yeah. When, when do things go the way that you want them to? And one of the things I remember learning from you you had told me, is if you can't stop your life for 15 minutes and just pause, and if you do that and everything falls apart, then you're doing something wrong. You yes. should be able to, and I have a video on that, you should be able to stop what you're doing for 15 minutes and be able to continue and not worry that you're going to be late or miss yeah. an opportunity. Yeah. And there's so many people running and losing their mind over these just small yeah. increments of time. Yeah. Because they just don't, and, and the, you know, 
Like I take the same train that the people that work exactly, there. but and somehow I show up at ten. Exactly, exactly. See, before I go to bed every night, I have a date book that uh, I, I keep on my nightstand. And before I go to bed, I open up my date book. It's a week at a glance, and I look at my day like tonight. I'll be before I go to bed. I will look at my tomorrow, which is Friday. Where do I have to be? Who are my clients? What time I start? What time I finish? What time I take a break? As soon as I get up in the morning, I open the book before I wash my face, before I get out of bed. I open the book and I look at my Friday again. Then I set my energy. I set before I get out of bed, I say, okay, I have this appointment, this appointment, this appointment for me to accomplish what I need to accomplish on Friday, because if I don't accomplish it, I'm not successful. I'm failing. So for me to accomplish that, I need to set my energy now. So now I have a mindset, Lewis, of exactly what I'm doing, how I'm going to move, and my energy will be consistent. Because I'm only getting up to win. I'm not getting up to lose. I like that attitude. I'm not getting up to lose. I'm getting up to win. So, ladies and gentlemen, one might say, well, how can I win? Okay, you guys are probably much younger, much older than uh, than I. If you want to win and if you want to be Successful. Look, look, America is the greatest country in the world. I've been around the world five times. Believe me, it's the greatest country in the world. But it's not a gimme. It's not a gimme. We have to get out of that um, uh, uh, mind space. It's not a gimme. But if you're willing to make your dream come true, you can. Because all of my dreams since I've had a dream have came true. One, uh, one of my friends asked me, he said, Carvin, have you ever lost anything in your life? The answer to that question is no. Because if this is what I want to do, I will do what is necessary to win. What, when, I'm not going to spend my time watching... Um, uh, Le, uh, what's his name? LeBron James, because I don't watch sports or... Or, or some baseball player, or some great football player. Look, look, I'm not going to spend my time watching no millionaire make money. I have a friend that likes to joke in bars when people get really, really excited at what's on the TV. And he's like, look, that guy made himself another million dollars. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, like, and then he would clap and everybody would look at him like he's a wise. He's like, look, he's gonna, oh, look the other guy's going to make another yeah, million yeah, dollars. Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I never got into it just because, you know. Well, well, see, see. You see, we aren't going to be here long enough. Even if we live to be a billion years old, eventually one day we are going to have to leave. Look, ladies and gentlemen, we are not permanent party on this earth. We are visitors. We are only visiting. So since we are visiting, let's, let's take advantage of it. Let's, let's, let's roll our sleeves up. Let's get our hands dirty. And let's make our dream come true. See, I, I, I didn't say let's go to work. See, see, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. I say let's roll our sleeves up. Let's get our hands dirty and let's make our dream come true. That's what Lewis did. I would see Lewis every time I would say he'd be doing something. He have a little bag, a little box of. He, I would say Lewis. What are you doing? And he said, oh, Michael, now I'm fixing this. And of course, I didn't speak the language, but I, 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 I would always watch him because he was always after something. See, after something. You have to be after it. You have to be after it. It's not going to chase you. Success is not going to chase you. They say, knock, knock, knock. They say, who's knocking? They say, that's opportunity knocking. No, 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 no. Let's get it straight now. There's no knock, knock, knock. Watch, watch my eyes. That's opportunity knocking. You see this, ladies and gentlemen? Watch my eyes. That's opportunity knocking. 
when your eyes open, that's opportunity to knock in. See, you, you aren't going to hear this. Forget about that. That's a commercial. Watch my eyes one more time. Opportunity is knocking. <laughs> I like that. So I, I had a couple of questions for you. Okay, and there's a bit yeah, of a backstory yeah. to each of these questions. So one of the things that I talk about a lot here is that in our business in tech, whether it's you know, you're setting up large infrastructure or just doing basic repairs, mm -hmm. you have to have the trust and the respect of the customer. Yes. If you don't have that, it doesn't matter what you try to, it doesn't matter if you do your job perfectly right. You can do yes. everything according to contract yes. and it will still fail. And the, and I remember this from the studio because the the owners had the idea that if somebody's paying, just deal with it. If they're not, you know, always respecting everything, just deal with it and get the money at the end. And I remember having a session one time, and everybody was just acting like fools. And you were leaving for the day. You usually left a little early. I think this is one of the few days you left yeah. at six or seven o'clock. Yeah. And you walk out and you see that my session just they're just all acting like assholes. And and I looked and I'm like, yeah, at least they're paying. And you laughed as loud as you could. Not a, you didn't laugh as loud as you could at me, I don't feel. I think you were laughing at just the general idea of the stupidity that just came out of my mouth. I yeah. said, at least they're paying. Yeah. And, you, and you laughed. And I'm like, what are you, what are you laughing at? And I'm paraphrasing because this is about a nine-year-old conversation. We haven't worked together since 2007 or eight. And uh, you said something along the lines, well, they don't respect your rules. And I'm like, and then you said, they don't respect your studio. And I'm like, eh, I can't say much there. And, you're like, and you said, then how the fuck do you expect that they're going to respect your bill at the end of the session? Yeah. And I'm just standing. And then you just started laughing and laughing again. And because I, 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 I genuinely had no answer. Like, again, it, the, it, it makes sense. The bill is part of the rules. Yeah. And I didn't really get what you were saying. Like, these people are not going to rob me. They don't look like robbers. Yeah. And that was the first session I ever had when I was 18. The first session mm -hmm. where somebody tried to not pay at the end. They yeah. wanted to stay late. They were fucking yeah. around the whole session. Yeah. Uh, there was a session in after them. They wanted to stay late. I couldn't have them stay late. So they started yeah. nitpicking about all these oh, stupid yeah. little things oh, yeah. that nobody else ever nitpicked about. They would nitpick yeah. about all this shit that yeah. just didn't matter. I know that yeah. that happens to a lot of you that have these types of clients. Yeah. And then they started saying, we don't want to pay. And exactly. that was the first time I ever had a 15-minute argument about it. And then I thought back to what you said. And I'm like, man, I thought that guy was being an asshole for laughing at me. But he was 100% correct. Yeah. And the reason that this came up in my head is because recently I, I teach a class on board mm -hmm. repair mm -hmm. and I have a scheduler. You have to book yes. time in the scheduler. Yes. And there are certain days that I teach and certain days I don't because mm -hmm. I need the, the rest of the staff at the store in order for me to sit in the back and teach. Yeah. And this one guy calls. He's not interested in the scheduler, not interested in the rules, not interested in anything. I explained everything to him. And then he shows up anyway with a check and says, I want to start now. And I go, <laughs> well, did you? But he interrupts me and he's like, I didn't use the schedule. I don't want, I don't want to figure that thing out. Yeah. And to me, there's two things wrong with that. The first is that if you cannot figure out how to use an online calendar, how are you going to figure out the difference between the RTC circuit, VCCIO, and vCore? And the second, the more important one is you've shown no respect for my rules. I don't teach on Sunday. Yeah. I don't have the time to. I have other engagements. Yeah. Nobody's here. Yeah. And a lot of, when I did the video on that, a lot of people said, you are being arrogant. You are not being professional. The whole idea mm -hmm. that a lot of people were saying is that, you're, I got a lot of private messages and emails over this, is that your job as a professional is to do what they ask, your job as a professional is to just shut up and do what the people who are paying you ask you to do. That's being unprofessional. And I just remembered back to what you were saying. I remember back to what you were saying about if they don't respect your rules and they don't respect your space, then how are they going to respect anything else? And I didn't take the customer. He had a $2,395 yeah. check in hand for five days, five hours a day, which yeah. is pretty decent money. And yeah. I just said no, because I, I remember what happened when I don't yeah. listen to you. Yeah. Again, this is one of those areas where a lot of the stuff that I talk about to you, it came from these other people. It didn't just come from me. Yeah. And, uh, where is it? and I also remember that there, was, uh, there were a lot of students that would come to that hall of the studio. See, you, you weren't the only one there. There was a bunch of other vocal coaches. There were a bunch yeah. of other musicians, yeah. drum instructors. Yeah. And they, all these people had these issues with the clients not showing up on time and yeah. then wanting to run late to somebody else's session. Yeah. Or they no-showed, and then they wouldn't want to pay because they didn't show up. <laughs> it's not my fault. It's the bus. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, always yeah, get, or, or they would show yeah, up, yeah. and then they would just start acting rowdy in the lobby yeah. and throwing stuff and yeah. avoiding the garbage. Yeah. And you remember what it looked like. Yeah, it, was, course, it was a mess. Course, yeah. so, but every time your students came in, I knew who they were before I even knew their name or what they looked like because they yeah. would show up. They would just sit like this, just reading a magazine, reading a book. If they had to throw something out, they just walked to the garbage. They'd knock yeah. on your door five minutes before your session. Your That's students right. were never late. No, there was one no. person I remember being late no. who was somebody who came like two times a week in two years. He was yeah. late like by two minutes and he was yes. so sorry. Yes. They'd knock on your door. They'd enter the room. Yes. They'd work. And then they would leave and they were just respectful. Yes. So I guess my, my, my questions here are, 
How do you keep standards high for client behavior? How okay. do you suggest people who are just starting a business do that? Because one thing that I get a lot is, Lewis, I know it's easy for you to ah, call customers out who yeah, don't do yeah, this. Yeah, I know yeah, it's yeah. easy for you because yeah, you've yeah, had your store yeah, for four years. Yeah, and you've had yeah, your business yeah. for seven years. What yeah, about me? I only yeah, have two yeah, people walking in a day. Yeah. I can't throw out business. What are you, yeah, nuts? Yeah. So how do you keep the standards high for client behavior? Yeah. How do you suggest new business owners do the same? And lastly, when is it proper to consider firing a client or a customer? When is it fine to consider... Just saying, I can't do business with you. You're fired. I don't, I'm not going to take your money. Okay, the first thing with my business, it might be a little different, <laughs> but I'll just say how I get respect all the time. Number one, I've never advertised. Never. Because when you advertise, you get riffraff. So I've never advertised. It's word of mouth. Okay, number two. When, when the client and I first speak on the phone, I say this to him or her. I say, get a pencil and paper. And, and they'll say, okay, and I can tell when the client has the pencil and paper or not. I can tell. And I'll say, okay, number one, you have to cancel two days ahead of time. If not, you have to pay me. If I don't cancel... My lesson with you, two, two days ahead of time, I have to pay you. I say, I'm not going to ask you to do something for me that I wouldn't do for you. Number two, you have to show up at your lesson 15 minutes ahead of time. You have to knock on the door. I will acknowledge you, and you will sit down until I come and get you. I say, now, when you knock on the door, because I don't use a, a stopwatch when I teach or, or alarm clock. So when you knock on the door... You have just let me know I have 15 minutes to wind down with the client that I have now. You make yourself comfortable and we will do our business. The next thing that we have to do, you have to bring pencil and paper to your class. All you have to bring is your stick bag because I have, and books because I have the drums and the symbols and, and all of that. Bring pencil and paper. There's no audio. There's no video. Okay. This is before uh, uh, the cell phone have really gotten what the, wh where it is now, where they have a notepad, right? So I'd say, now, do you understand that? And they're like, yes. And I can tell by the answer who did it or who didn't. But I don't, I don't question them. These are adults. You got in touch with me. I didn't get in touch with you. I'm not impressed with you getting in touch with me because I have a job to do. And my job is to make your dream come true. So I have enough to do. So you have to do what we have agreed. Now, we have an agreement, Lewis. We, we have agreed on this. Because everything that I've said to you, you have said, okay. So we have a verbal agreement as businessman or a businessman and woman. Okay. Now, if you show up to your lesson late, <clears throat> You come in, you have to pay me for the lesson because my time is important. I don't care if you like it or not. I don't care if you understand it or not. Now, if you say, well, Carvin, I'm not going to pay you for the lesson, fine. Then don't pay me, leave, and don't come back. That's that. They, they, we ain't, you ain't got to apologize. That's not necessary. This is business. We aren't joining a little boys club. We aren't doing cookies on Sunday. This is business. We are men. We have a verbal agreement. This is business. Okay? And, and that's that. And I'm through with it. And, and I'm not mad at the client or none of that uh, 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 middle school type of language. Okay? I'm a Vietnam veteran. I don't have time for, for holding hands and changing diapers. We're going to do business? Let's do business. If you want somebody to hold hands and change diapers with, you get you a nana. Don't come here. With that. And, and, and watch this. And all the best to you. And all the best to you and your family. I'm not mad at you. It's not personal. It's business. It's business. I'm a businessman. Now, several times, this, this have only happened twice in 43 years. <laughs> I'm giving a guy a lesson. So I finished the lesson. So the guys say, well, well, you know, I... I I'm, I'm not really happy with, with the lesson. I said, well, fine. 
He said, but I'm going to pay you for it. I said, okay, great. If you want to pay for it, you pay for it. If you don't want to pay for it, I could care less. He said, no, 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 I'm going to pay you. You gave me a lesson, but I'm, I'm not really happy with it. So I said, okay, great. So he gave me, uh, I think I was charging $50. Then he gave me a $50 bill. And I said, well, set it there. And he set it down. I was smoking my uh, uh, Romeo and Juliet El Presidente Cuban cigar that cost $300 a box. And I was smoke, smoking one when I was smoking then. And I say, l l let me ask you a question. He said, yes. I said, is that $50 mine? He said, yeah, I paid you for your lesson. I said, no, but does that mean that that money belongs to me? He said, yes. I said, well, if that $50 bill belongs to me, I can do whatever I want to do with it then, can I? He said, yeah. So I took my cigar and burned it up. <laughs> <laughs> and I told him, this is what I think about you, and this is what I think about your buddy, and don't come back. Now, one might argue, well, you are very this or you are very that. Okay, true. But ladies and gentlemen, listen to me. I'm in business of making dreams come true. I'm not in the business of holding hands and changing diapers. No disrespect to people that do that type of service that's needed, but that's not here. Okay, when a guy walked through my door, what he said to me physically is, Carvin, I'm putting my dream and my trust in the palm of your hands. Don't you let me down. He doesn't know, Lewis, how to take himself to his dream. I do. So I'm just going to teach him properly. Now, is it a gimme? No, it's not a gimme. It's, 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 ladies and gentlemen, it's not a gimme. It's not a gimme. Can we get it done? Yes, we can. Will it be painful? Probably. Because when we change, in order to change, that's what change means. Pain, different. So, yes. Yes. But, but, but what happens, though, Lewis, either they hate me. See, it, 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 it's, it's, this is the only way that it has ever worked for me, ladies and gentlemen. Either you whip me from the first lesson or you will never see me again. I mean, it's just like that. Uh, it, uh, one guy told me, he said, you know, you, you're just terrible. You're, I don't like your tone. I said, well, what key am I in? He was like, what? I said, well, what key am I in? I mean, we are musicians. If you don't like my tone of voice, I said, but let me say this to you. As a musician, we will play at pianissimo, mezzo forte, and forte. So I will speak to you from time to time at pianissimo, mezzo forte, and forte. Now, if you want to think that I'm screaming at you, if you want to think that I'm, I'm, I'm being a bad guy, that's up to you. But I speak the same way that I play. I play very intense, and I play at pianissimo, mezzo forte, and forte. So therefore, if, if, if I'm in the moment of trying to take you to your dream, I'm going to do whatever I have to do to allow your dream to come true, not mine. Now, I, I, I found that when I set those standards, Lewis, but, 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 but now this is what you have to watch. You can't ever be wrong. <laughs> when you set your standards as high as I set my standards, you can never be wrong because they will eat you up. And rightfully so. Rightfully so. I would rather be two hours early than to be one minute late. You can't expect them to listen to you if you won't listen to yourself kind of thing. Yes, sir. I'd rather be two hours early than one minute late. I'm not going to rush. I'm going to be prepared. When they come in, the drums are clean. The drums are spotless. The room is ready, and I'm, we, we are ready to go to work. The pencil and my paper is ready. We are ready to go to work. Why? Because I have to lead by example. 
So I can't get caught short. That was a good I lesson. I can't get caught short. I remember there was this one old video I had done where I talked about uh, earning authority versus just demanding it. You know, you have people that oh, say, yes, sir. my name tag says I'm the manager, therefore you listen to me. Yeah. And then there are people that will lead by example. So they'll, they'll tr if they want you to accomplish something, they will accomplish it first. If yes, they sir. want you to be on time, they will be on time. Yes, sir. And that all the leaders that are actually respected are the people that follow their own rules. Yes, sir. And they won't even explain the rules. They will just deal with people that follow, that follow their example. That's right. And it's easy to respect somebody who follows their own example. It's hard to respect somebody that says, manager on my name tag. Well, that's dictatorship. And, and don't nobody need a dictator. You see, people, as a rule of thumb, are great observers. They're great observers. It's very important if you have a place of business, ladies and gentlemen, if you have a picture on the wall, make sure the frame is even and straight. It can't be crooked, man. Yeah, but what does that have to do with me? But I'm still the genius. Hey, hey, no, 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 no. It's, it's, it's the whole package. It's the complete package. 99 and a half is not going to get it. We have to have 100. See, you see, nobody in the professional world is going to roll over for somebody else to get a shot at success. That's not going to happen now. <laughs> That's a, that, look, 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 Louis, if you wasn't on the level that you are on, you would not be successful. There are no gimmies out here, ladies and gentlemen. I, cannot, I, 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 I can't stress that enough. There are no gimmies. Is it beautiful? Yes, it's beautiful. Yes, lifestyle. You pick your lifestyle. That's beautiful. You pick your situation. That's beautiful. Gorgeous, man. That's, 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 it's, 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 it, what I really like, though, Lewis, is after the students have been with me about 90 days. It took about 90 days, ladies and gentlemen. Why? Why? Because we have to first get into the new rhythm of learning. The new rhythm. Oh, I have to be on time. Oh, he's not going to accept an excuse. Oh, I, I need to... And then you, you start finding that everything will start shifting. And loved ones will start recognizing that. Everything will start shifting. Why? Because one has to care more about oneself in order to be successful. You really have to care more about yourself. So you will find that, uh, I can see after 90 days, the students start to groom themselves. And when they first came to me, they weren't grooming themselves because I groomed myself. So they looking and they looking and then eventually, you know. So after that 90 day period, then they have an idea of the amount of endurance it takes to be on time, to get the lesson done. See, that we, you, you have to change your energy. The, the endurance in your body has to, has to change. You know, now, this is something that I found, Lewis. Nothing happens in 18 months. Why, Carbon? Okay, that's a good question. Let me answer it. The first six months, as we embark upon any new idea or anything, that first six months create the excitement. Because without excitement, we cannot generate momentum. So the first six months, we get excited. Oh, yes, I'm over here with Lewis, and I'm teaching, he's learning, and I'm getting it together. Now you are creating momentum. So from, uh, from the sixth month to the twelfth month, which is one year, your momentum is getting stronger and stronger and stronger. That last six months, which is 18 months, you are there. Because nobody's going to do anything in two years. You listen to uh, the people when they are talking. They, they say, hey, man, well, what you doing? Well, I'm working on this new project. And you say, great. Well, uh, how long have you been doing it? The guys say, mm, uh, well, it's a little longer than I had expected. You know, it's been about two years. That's a failure talking. You cannot gain, no, 
One cannot gain momentum and hold that type of, of, of excitement for no 24 months. You can do it for 18 months because once again, the first six months, we get excited. The second six months, the excitement turned into momentum. The last six months, the momentum turned into success. No such thing as 12, uh, 24 months. Won't nobody do nothing in 24 months. We can't focus that long. The other thing I wanted to ask you about with the, with the school that you have, because a lot of what I've been trying to do with this channel is try to teach people how to work on systems that don't have a manual. So like 10 or 20 or 30 years ago, when you got electronics, you could get a schematic. In mm -hmm. addition to the schematic, you got a manual that says, this is what these, this is what mm -hmm. these signals mean. This is what they do. Now mm -hmm. you get none of that. You have to find okay. it. And you have to guess how, what is the sequence. What sequence are these signals supposed to turn on in? Oh. You have to guess what's supposed to turn on first. What does this do? What does that do? So you have to have this kind of analytical mindset. And mm -hmm. that's kind of what I try to teach with all of these YouTube videos. I'm not really a teacher. I'm just somebody that fixes electronics and records it. And I've been trying to become a better teacher as, as time goes on. And I try to teach a mindset. I don't want people to just, you know, I don't want to tell somebody who says, I have no light. This is my voltage to, you know, replace <laughs> R9731. Because then when the next year's design comes out, he's not going to figure it out. I want no, him to understand no. the mindset that I had when I figured out what this signal does and what yes. the problem is so that they can do it themselves when the new model comes out and there's new stuff. And I feel like you have, are a master of that. And I, I remember... Uh, just asking uh, the owner of the studio one day, you know, what does Michael Carvin do after that one session that I had mm -hmm. where everybody was acting like idiots and you mm -hmm. had left late? And he goes, he teaches drums. And I said, that's odd. I've never heard drums come from his room. <laughs> and I've been working here like six or eight months now. I've never heard drums. And uh, he said, well, uh, he teaches. And I said, so, what is, so how does he do that? And he goes, why, do, why do I never hear drums? And, and the owner said, well, that, that's how Michael Carvin teaches drumming. And I had a short conversation with you right as the place was closing, and I'm paraphrasing because it's again a like nine-year-old conversation. Uh -huh. yeah. You had said something along the lines of, "I don't teach drums; I teach discipline, and, exactly. I, and I can and I teach drums by introducing people to themselves." Exactly. So how are you teaching people how to play drums and become better musicians without actually without me hearing it? Because again, all the other drummers, I would hear from the, the instructors, you'd hear just 40 minutes of dun dun yeah, dun yeah, dun yeah, dun yeah, dun yeah, dun. Yeah, yeah, I never yeah, heard that from your room. No, and, no. See, you see. It's an hour lesson, 60 minutes, right? Okay, I've never advertised, Lewis. So the, the, the people are coming to me to become a better drummer, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm a drum instructor, right? So they have to know the drums, not me. I mean, I'm going to make you better. I'm not going to teach you. There's nothing I can teach anybody about the drums. What I'm going to do is change your mind. Um, I change people's minds. See. I teach from the inside out. Most people teach from the outside in. That's why people are not successful because they hear stuff, but they don't, it doesn't apply to them. The first thing in the first lesson, my first lesson with a client, he had to tell me his dream. If he doesn't have a dream, I, I can't teach him because he don't want nothing. What is your dream, man? When you... Uh, I'll say 10 years from now, when you look out of your living room window, what would you like to see? Would you like to see rolling hills or beautiful mountains or deer and beautiful trees? Or what, what, what do you want to see? When you look out of your kitchen window, what, what would you like to see? When you look out of your bedroom window, what would you like to see? And they'll say, I never thought about that. I say, well, think about that because without that, you aren't going to do this. You, 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 you can't do this. So then I tell them, okay, in order to study with me, you have to know your 26 rudiments, okay? The 26 rudiments, Lewis, to a drummer is the same as the 26 alphabets or the 26 characters of the alphabets to a journalist. A journalist cannot build a word without knowing those characters. So therefore, if a guy want to go to journalism school, and if he don't know his 26 characters, he can't even spell his name. So if you can't build a word, therefore you can't build a sentence, therefore you can't build a paragraph, therefore you can't write a short story. So I'm not going to teach you how to do what you're supposed to be. Hey, Carmen, yeah, man, uh, uh, I'm a drummer. And I would like to study with you. 
Nah, nah, nah. Let me hear what the client is saying. I'm a drum. I'm a drummer. I'm a drummer. And I would like to study with you. I'm a crackhead. You got some dope. You, you, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean, you know, I mean, I'm just listening. You know, I'm a fool. You got a padded cell. Oh, OK, I'm just listening. OK, so you have identified yourself to me. So now we are in the ballpark. So I'll say to you, then, if you don't know your 26 rudiments, Lewis, we can't speak the language. I, you don't have to. We only have an hour. I ain't going to be listening to no five drummers. That's five hours of them banging on drums. No, man. Well, well, tell me. And, 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 then I, uh, and then the next question I say to them is this. What is your disadvantage on the instrument? Oh, well, I never thought, thought of, about, about that. I said, well, think about it. Well, I have trouble playing so and so. I say the reason why you have trouble doing that is because you don't know this. So for next week, you get that together. Well, how often should I practice? How many hours a day can you practice? Or tell me how much time you can dedicate to this per day. Well, well, I can do so and so and so and so. I can I say, okay, fine. In order to accomplish what you want to accomplish, if you can practice this for five minutes a day for one week, we can get into it. And then I tell them, I say, I'm not interested in speed. I'm not interested in speed. I'm interested in evenness and cleanliness. If I can teach you how to play everything evenly and clean, you will move it with your mind. I say, for instance, the first day you ran as a child, you did not stand on the side of your bed practicing running. You woke up that morning, you came downstairs, your dog took off the street, you just ran running or the ice cream man passed or your best partner, but, but, but you didn't practice, you didn't stand on the side of the bed and say, well, tomorrow I'm going to run, so let me practice running. Your parents, when, one of your, when your father stood here and your mother stood there and you wobbled across with your diapers on, they was teaching you balance. You knew balance. You could already run because you moved your body with your mind. And the reason why you didn't fall down, because you can walk. So I don't need the speed. I just need the knowledge and the evenness and the cleanliness. So then they'll start saying, oh, oh, OK. So I've never played in a lesson. Why? Because I don't want nobody to sound like me. I, I don't want nobody mimicking me. And I tell my students, look, if I can't teach you, from my mind to your one one mind, I'm not qualified to teach you, man. I'm sticking you up without a gun and a mask. <laughs> if, if, be, be, because if I have the knowledge, you should be able to present a situation and I should be able to solve that situation. That's what you were saying. If, if so, so, so uh, what you are teaching, Lewis, is the rudiment to this particular situation. Because if they have the rudiment, it doesn't make any difference what model it is. Because as we know with technology, every six months it's changed. So we need a rudiment. We, we need, this is the rudiment to that. You know, and once my students get used to the way that I teach, because the way that I teach, I teach the student to win. I've had people in uh, in lessons who ask, ask, you know, can I see you do this first? And I'll I'll always put off doing that as long as possible because I want I don't want to hold your hand and say no, hold the iron yeah, like yeah, that. I want to yeah, get yeah. I want to see what they you're doing on the screen. Yeah. I want to see yeah. what you're doing on the screen and suggest yeah. if you try holding it this. If you put use yeah. the blade X section yeah. instead of the point, yeah. Yeah. you may find you get you get more temperature, more surface area. I want to yeah. explain it to yeah. them through that way. Yeah. And it, and it remind and I got that from some of the stuff you said. I also. Um, Let's say instead of explaining exactly how something works in the beginning when somebody's totally clueless, I'll just say, what do you think's going on here? Exactly. Because the thing is, I understand that you're going to have no fucking clue what's going on there, exactly. but I want you to guess. Exactly. I want you to, because the, the first time I look at it, the first thing I do is go, what the fuck is going on here? Yeah. And I, and I want to see how you think so that I can then just probe you with these suggestions. I want to kind of yeah. fill in the blanks yeah. rather than build everything from the beginning. I want to just fill in your specific blanks. Yeah. 
And this reminds me of something that you said. The reason I started trying to teach people this way when they came mm -hmm. for lessons, I, I'm heavily paraphrasing because this is a lot. I don't remember if this is exactly mm -hmm. what you said, but you said if I had a drumming teacher who started playing the drums to teach me how to play drums, I'd beat the shit out of him. Yes. Something like that. Yes. I mean, I mean, yes. How, how correct. You know is. why? I'm paying him to practice. That don't make sense to me. I come to a drum lesson and the teacher's sitting there playing on the drums for 60 minutes, then I have to give him my, my money. I just paid for him to practice. What about me? You're, you're supposed to be teaching me. I don't supposed to be paying you for you to sit up here and practice for an hour and I'm paying you for it. That doesn't make sense to me. That's like going into a restaurant and ordering steak and potatoes and then the chef brings it out to your table. He sits down and eat it and you pay the, 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 the check. That's ridiculous. Yeah, like I never saw it that way until you gave me the analogy and then when I did, see, I realized See, because, Louis, see, see, what you were teaching at that point is seek and ye shall find. Seek and ye shall find. Seek. We have to uh, 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 be willing and don't be so afraid to make a mistake. We are all afraid to make a mistake. We are so afraid to make a mistake because we are so afraid that somebody going to think that we are stupid. Nobody is stupid. That's just a word that people use because they somebody used the word on them and therefore somebody used the word on them and therefore somebody used the word on them. If we can see and we can find and that becomes a habit. Oh my goodness. I remember Sam Field at the studio used to say all the time, the only re everything I've learned is from not being afraid to show just how stupid I am. Yeah, but because look, 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 look. And he was like 78 at that time. Yeah, you, saying, you know, know, like 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 people are so afraid that somebody is gonna say that they are stupid. Hey, they don't know you, <laughs> they didn't give birth to you. What difference does it make? They are only words. You never struck me as somebody who cared what people thought of you. Oh, I could care less. And that's something that I've gotten a I lot could of criticism care less. for. You know why? Because I was given the birth of life, man. And, and once you receive the birth of life, why should you be caring about somebody else that have the birth of life that think that they have the right to say something to you to, uh, to try to belittle you or make you feel that you are not who you are? But you are because you have the breath of life, man. It don't get no better than that. I'm alive. I'm alive. You know, <laughs> you know, like uh, the, the young son of Frankenstein. He's alive. He's a. Hey, I'm alive, man. Come on. That that's the ball game. Oh, oh, okay, if we want to use that language, that's the whole ball game. That's the whole pizza pie. I'm alive. I have the breath of life. Now, this is another thing that I teach my students after they have been with me maybe maybe a year, I start to change the language. And I'll tell them this. They'll say, well, why, why won't you play in your lessons? And I say, well, the reason why I don't play in my lesson is because I have my own fingerprints. And I'm not going to play in the lesson. I need to introduce you to your fingerprint. I say, now, if we buy into the fact that someone can lift your fingerprint off a glass in a bar and find you anywhere on the face of this earth, if we believe that, then we should also believe this. You are very special. <laughs> you are very special. So live your life like your fingerprint. That's a good outlook. You one of a kind, baby. You don't need nobody to co-sign you. You are the special one. If, in fact, they can lift your finger off a glass and find you anywhere in the world. And once again, I buy into that concept. So therefore, I buy into, look, look, my mother. Fingerprint is not the same as mine, and I lived inside of her body for nine months. <laughs> so somebody is going to tell me that have their own fingerprint that I'm stupid. Hey, man, freedom of speech. Say whatever you want to say. I ain't mad at you, but if you think I'm going to believe that, you're out of your mind. I'm special. Yeah. I have my own fingerprint.
Another thing, I, there was another session that I had that was going very silly, and you had somebody walk over to the drums who was very, very obviously not a drummer with the door open, and they just started smashing on it. They, they were not, I, I don't even know if they were with the band or friends of the band or actual mm -hmm. musician. And, I, and you said, uh, you seem to find this distasteful and obnoxious. And you said, you know, people, do, some, some like, people don't walk over to a saxophone and blow into it. They don't walk up to a cello and try playing yeah. it with their keys. Yeah, but for some barriers. reason, yeah. people, people will walk up to drums having no idea what they're doing and decide it's just okay to start smashing them. It's respectable. And I relate this to what we do. Because one of the biggest criticisms now with the independent technicians who are not authorized mm -hmm. is that people will walk up to what are our instruments, a hot air station, a soldering iron, a multimeter, mm -hmm. have no idea what they're doing, mm -hmm. take in devices from customers, destroy them, obliterate them beyond yeah. any reasonable yeah. repair, give it yeah. back to them and say, sorry. Yes. And, oh, and, yeah. and the, oh, yeah. the issue here oh, is yeah. that then when the manufacturers tell, uh, start talking to senators and assembly people, they say, look, we can't have these people working on stuff because they destroy it. It's, it's a problem that, pe that people who have no idea what they're doing, yeah. who, who, who know that they don't know what's going on, yeah. are touching the instruments before they know what they're doing. It, it is, and it's part of what I want to solve with this channel. I want people to get into the analytical mindset and be thinking before they start working with the instrument. Yeah. So I guess my question here is what mindset... An experience level should somebody be in before they start working with any of these instruments, whether it's the tech stuff that I work with, or just say, or just when they decide to sit down at the drums and start playing. Like, what mindset should they be in so that they don't wind up screwing things up? They have to realize that there's a rudiment. They have to re realize that there's a right and wrong way to do anything. You know, most people, uh, uh, one of the greatest compliments that I've gotten in the last 65 years as a drummer from uh, someone in an audience, a lady gave me the compliment. She said two things. The first thing is she said to me, I didn't realize that the drums could be played that softly. And her second greatest compliment that I've, ever received. She said, I didn't know drummers read music. I don't know if I, how much of a compliment I'd be able to you could, like, you could take that either way, like one of, like really, really well or seriously? Well, like, I took it really, really well because uh, uh, a lot of people, they, they are jokes about, well, uh, you, you, you got 15 musicians and a drummer. Ha, 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 ha. You got... And, and, and that's fine. I mean, uh, who cares? But uh, you name one hit record where they don't have a drum on it, or give me one record that went platinum or gold without a drum on it. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, uh, 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 things are going to always be, but what is important, is, it be, because we're talking about students that are, are coming to you to learn from you then they have to understand that there is a way, correct way, that this is done. So whatever language you want to use to, we, we use the 26 rudiments. That was a, 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 that's the standard American rudimental chart for uh, uh, an American drummer. Uh, the Swiss have a different rudiments, but nevertheless, they're, uh, they're still rudiments. So in your business, the people have to understand that there's a right and wrong way. That's all. And, and once someone uh, expressed that, I'm quite sure that, 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 that uh, you won't have any uh, problem with it. You, you know, the most dangerous thing, in my opinion, uh, uh, when a person advertises, is you never know what you're going to get, man. You know, so... Uh, if you have to advertise your business, then it, is, it can be difficult. You told me over the phone, brain surgeons don't have billboards. No, 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 no. It's funny. I didn't, people ask, I didn't have a sign for the first three and a half years that yeah. I had the store. And putting yeah. it up did nothing. But I didn't have any sign, yeah. not even letters in the door. Yeah. But people walked in every day. Well, well, well you see, people by nature, we, we, we as, as, as people by nature are curious. We're just curious creatures. I mean, we, we are curious. We, we see things and we be, oh, I wonder what is that? And that's good and that's bad. But uh, quality 
quality is something that is very special. Anywhere you can find it, Qual quality is something that is very special. And there are uh, uh, a lot of people on the face of this earth that have great quality. So to be a real successful, see, Lewis, see, we, we are only as great as our students. If our students, Lewis, don't leave us and make their dream come true, we are failures. We fail them because we know better or we supposed to know better. Now, if we have a guy that is not going to do it by the book, so to speak, then they have to be dismissed or they will ruin your, your reputation in your business. <coughs> Excuse that, me. Yeah, because with some of the stuff that I put out, if I am drilling a hole through a board, then burning a piece of it off, then running a wire through 10 different pieces to get around something, I want people to get that that's something that can be done and that you can do it and you can learn. I want them to learn. Yes. I don't want them to do that on the first thing they ever work on that belongs to somebody else. Like, exactly. And people kind of get that twisted. They think that I want to give out the idea that you can do this on the first one. It's going to work on the first try and you can do that for a paying customer. And that's that's not the idea that I've ever tried to give across, yeah. but a lot of people have gotten the idea that I'm going to do, he did it and it looks easy and it looks easy because you're watching my 6,000th try. The yes, first 5,999 yes, yes. didn't, yes. you know, it went kind of different. I had a band leader tell me once, maybe this was 40 years ago and I, I, I thought I was, I knew everything. And I joined the band and we're in the first rehearsal and we finished playing a song. And I say, I know I have a great idea about, you know, with this song, if I played this beat, and the band leader turned around and said, I hate anybody with a great idea. <laughs> this is a more, I guess, off, off the wall question. It says it's not so much to do with drumming, but... As time goes on, there are less and less documents available that say how any of what we work on uh, works or what, what any of the signals mean, how any of it is put together. And there are a lot of people that on their journey to learning this become very discouraged, particularly yes. because there's no teacher. So when I wanted to start learning how to, let's say, work on consoles and tape machines and studio gear, there were manuals, there were people to teach me. I had something to fall back on. With, what I'm, yes. with the type of boards I'm working on now, they're designed to not be fixable. The, yes. The guides are not available. So I have, yes. and it's very easy to become discouraged when you're on your 200th or 250th guess as to how a circuit works, uh, as to what's going on. So, and, and I, I, I remember what it was like to get discouraged until, and say, screw this until okay. something finally made sense. And I get a lot of messages from people who have that discouragement when they're at their 250th try and something just blows up. So, I mean, what, what mindset or what advice would you have to those people so that they don't become discouraged? when they're working on a system that has no manual that they have to figure out on their own. Okay, now, th this is difficult because now we, we, we are flying blind. We don't have the, uh, the instruments to uh, uh, get us through the storm. This might be something you would consider, uh, Lewis. Why won't we between now and say um, six months from now, why won't we construct with pictures some type of rudiment? Why won't you invent your own rudiment? See, you know how to do it. If anything happened to you, the knowledge is gone. So we know for a fact every six months, it's going to change. We, that's for fact. But can we create some type of ABC? Let's say, well, this is, this, well, oh, we need a common denominator. We need a common denominator. So maybe in the next six months, Louis, we should figure out a common denominator so people can have a guideline. Just a common denominator where you can use your language and pictures and say, we'll do this is step, step one, boom. 
Step two, bing. Step three, boom. Now, if it's only going for a step three, that's fine. And you can, because we can do the videotape and all of that now, and you have the sardine iron or whatever instrument you are using, and you physically do it. And you explain what you are doing, but only the rudiment of it. Because something is common in your business. Something is common. It has to be, or we couldn't do it. So something is common. So we have to figure out what is the common denominator of what I'm doing. And once we figure out that common denominator, now you have a system. Because, and it can just be, once again, it, 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 it don't have to be step one, two, 95. It can be step, but for instance, if, 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 if I was going to write a book on how to have a good golf swing, I taught myself how, how to play golf 20 years ago because when I was 50, I needed something to challenge my mind. So I started playing golf and my beautiful bride said, well, once you get a golf teacher, I said, I'm not going to get a golf teacher. She said, why? I said, because I want to struggle. I need something to struggle with to keep my mind strong. I don't want to teach it. I want to figure it out. Now, what I knew from the drums, if you grip, if I grip the drumstick too tight, it's not going to bounce easy. If I don't have an even flow of energy, I'm not going to get an even sound. So when I picked up a golf club already new, I'm not going to squeeze this club because I'll take the balance and the the uh, uh, out of the, the golf club itself. I knew about tempo because I'm a drummer. So I would go to the driving range with no balls. People thought I was crazy. And I would practice maybe for an hour with no golf balls just swinging the club in the air to feel what it feels like when you swing it. I just wanted to feel, what does it feel like when you swing a golf club? I don't know. I never played golf. And after I really got the muscle memory about what that feel like, then I would get a bucket of balls and I would pick a spot on the driving range to hit the ball, Lewis, but I only wanted to hit the ball 10 yards. People really thought I was crazy then because they would pass by and I would be hitting the ball only 10 yards. And a lot of people would say, sir, I don't really mean to get in your business, but you're really wasting your time here. This is a driving range. You're only hitting the ball 10 yards. I mean, you should really hit the ball. And I would say, thank you very much. And when they would leave, then I would keep hitting the ball 10 yards because I know one day I'm going to have to play a 10 yard shot. I'm not worried about hitting the ball far. That'll come in time. I want to be able to control it, hitting it at a shorter distance because that'll give me feel and control. So when you have feel and control, you have what? Technique. So I was working on the technique of the golf club. I'm not concerned about hitting it no 200 yards. I'll, I'll get to that when it's time. So we need to come up with a method for your client clients where A, boom, B, C, or whatever, just to get them to understand this has to be done. I don't care what if this one just been made in 2018 or in 2030. These three steps apply. And from that, you have a foundation. Then we can let that creative mind be, be creative because that's the way you were. When I first met you, you were just flying by the seat of your pants, man. I would see you and you'd be coming in. And I'd say, man, where you get this stuff from? And you say, well, uh, I found this on the sidewalk and this. And I'm like, okay, Lord. But, but I knew when I saw you, I knew you was going to be successful. Why? Because you wanted to be. That comes into my last question. Uh, a lot of a lot of people see that I started with 200 bucks and that I built a store and a successful business and employees. And they ask, 
you know, how did you do this or how did you do that so that they can mimic it? And they, and one thing that I've tried to explain is that I'm showing you how to fix these devices and I'm giving you advice from my life path and business so that you can avoid all of my mistakes. Exactly. I want people to avoid my mistakes, exactly. the stupid things I've done. Exactly. I, I make these videos so you can avoid the mistakes. I don't make the, the videos so that people can, can copy it because I exactly. know that you can't follow my life path. So no. me working at a studio that goes out of business, then buying something so I can finish a session that comes broken, yeah. then fixing that because I need it for a session, then selling it. Yeah. Is that, you know, this is, it, it, you can't walk in my life path. And I, no. and I get a lot of these messages that I genuinely wish I had better answers for from people who, they want to work at something. They want to yes. be successful at something. Yes. And they have these stories that are genuinely, genuinely depressing with genuinely yeah. de- just depressing experience, yeah. sickness, illness. I've gotten emails yeah. from people from Syria who yeah. are going through all the conflict right now and they yeah. want to, and, and they're asking for advice and I have no idea what yeah. to give them. So for people who are in just coming up from really, really bad circumstances, which make up a good portion of my audience, who just want to work towards something, but they don't know what it is they should work toward. They don't have a direction okay. in life. What okay. advice would you give them to try to find direction in life? Okay. The first step in finding direction, what do you like? Just ask them, what do you like? Well, I don't know what I like. You like something. What do you like? Well, I don't like anything. Okay. What do you hate? Well, I hate so and so and so. Okay. How would you change it? If you could change it, how would you go go about it? We have to teach them to think and stop being upset and stop being afraid. Oh, yeah, Carbon, but you can sit here in, in, in America and say that and these people are starving and their country is falling apart. I understand all of that. Once again, I'm a Vietnam veteran. I understand all of that. You're asking me to help you. I'm helping you. If you if you have nothing that you like, then let's take hate. See, see, if you like something, that's energy. In our society, we we'll we say that's positive energy. If you hate something, watch this. It's still energy. But we'll say in our society, well, that's negative energy. Okay, but if that's all the energy you got, then it's positive. If you want to work to change something that you see as negative, that's not necessarily negative. I like that. Exactly. So, so if, if you can start thinking about how to change it, now we got you doing what? Thinking. We got you thinking. That's all we want you to do is start thinking. See, people are afraid. No, that's the wrong language. People don't know how to teach themselves to think. So, if, 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 if the first question is like, tell me something that you like. And once again, if, if, if they say they don't like anything. See, see, Lewis, the most important job for us is to connect with their energy. Once you can connect with a person's feel of energy, then you can what? Channel that energy in the proper way. Because that's all we are is energy, man. I mean, it, it, when at, at night, when we would fight at night in Vietnam, we would have the infrared vision. Trees were blue through the infrared. The, the, a, a human being or anything uh, with uh, uh, flesh and blood, it's red and yellow flashing. So once I saw that for 18 months in Vietnam, I say, we are energy. Because I'd always wondered as a kid growing, growing up in Texas, why, why does a rattlesnake bite people that don't bite trees? I mean, a tree is larger than a person, but why they bite a human being? Because the, the snakes have infrared vision, man. That's where man got the idea from. So once I realized we are only energy, then that made, it, it helped me to be a great teacher because if I have a student that, that if all they do is hate something, that's great. Let's work with hate. Let's work with that. I think that you can turn hate around into a positive thing if you hate something or d- and dislike something that is unfair 
or not correct if you're working to change it. All we want to do is get that energy moving. In order to get energy moving in a human being, we need something that they like or that they hate, just something to get them moving. Once we get them moving, guess what? We got them. I like that. Well, hey, 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 look, look. What can't get up can't get out. Yeah. <laughs> That's about all I have for you today. So, I mean, thank oh, you very man. much for coming on the show. Thank and you, Lewis. It was good seeing you again. Oh, it's, it's a good, long time. Uh, it's good to be seen. It's good to be seen, man. I'm telling you, it's good to be seen. See, when you're 71 and people say, oh, it's good to see you, say, well, it's good to be seen. <laughs> I feel the same way at 27. <laughs> yeah, man, because there are a whole lot of my friends I can't see. but So it's good to be seen. But thank you so much, though, for uh, even thinking of me. Out of all the people on the face of this earth, I'm, I'm thankful that you thought of me. And ladies and gentlemen, and Lewis, uh, uh, world of his uh, video show uh, information, Check him out. This is one of the young men that I met years ago. But I knew when I saw him, he was going to be successful. At what? I don't know. I don't know. I didn't even care. I just recognized a what? A winner. And how do you recognize a winner? One that is always after something. So if I didn't say anything else today that might help you, maybe that'll help you. But dreams come true. Be after something. Dreams come true. That's a good end to it.